Hey, how's it going, guys? So today, I'm going to go over just a few special considerations for pediatrics, mainly just infants, since I've been making a few videos on pediatrics. Um, and I'm going to focus on CPR. And I am going to use the AHA guidelines, which is what everybody uses. So if you're an EMT, you fall under these guidelines in general. And first off, how do you check for a pulse on an infant? Well, you check the brachial pulse. Um, on the inside of your arm, you have this artery, and it's called the brachial artery. So, <clears throat> on a baby, you would check on the inside. So you would get the, you would get these two fingers right here, put them on the, in the inside right here like this, and check for a pulse. We're gonna check for the pulse between five seconds and ten seconds. All right, and now. It's a little different when it comes to babies or infants as far as like what the rate needs to be. Um, usually per AHA any pulse is good on an adult. Um, however, however, for an infant, a baby, that's not so. Um, that's just children and pediatrics in general. You have to have a pulse of at least 60 per minute for it to be okay. All right, so if it's below 60 per minute, we're gonna start doing compressions. If it's above 60 per minute, we're good to go. We don't have to do compressions, all right? So how do you know if the beat is 60 per minute if you're only checking between five and 10 seconds um, if that's what the guidelines say? I mean, if you're going off those guidelines, if you're going off uh, your, your, your county protocols, which is just check uh, for 15 seconds, check for 30 seconds, then that's different. You can, you can multiply and it makes it easier for you. But let's go ahead and just pretend that we're going off the AHA guidelines. Uh, the best way to know if the heartbeat is above 60 or not is uh, if you really think about it, there are 60 seconds in one minute, right? So if you go to check for the pulse and you get this, that's obviously more than 60 beats per minute. Now if you get this, beat, long pause, again that's gonna be below 60 per minute worst case scenario if if you don't know we're always gonna go on the safe side and yet and just do CPR that's the best way to go about that so after you identify that your patient has a pulse below 60 or has no pulse we're gonna use a two finger technique it's as easy as that it sounds it's just what it sounds like the, the same two fingers that you check for a pulse with are the ones you're gonna do CPR with and we're gonna go ahead, go ahead and find the nipple line. Directly underneath that nipple line, midline, you're gonna start compressions, all right? And we're gonna go about an inch and a half, but the key word, I mean, the key number here is one third. So you wanna go at least one third from anterior to posterior or from front to back, if you wanna just remember like that. From front to back, at least one third in depth using your two finger technique. Now, if you're by yourself, um, because your your EMT partner, your paramedic, had to go get a uh, get a bag, get some equipment, then you're gonna do the 30 and two ratio. So 30 compressions and two breaths. The biggest issue here when it comes to actually doing compressions is people tend to hold back because it's a baby. We, we get it. You don't want to hurt the baby. You don't want to break anything. Well, by actually holding back, you're actually hurting the baby because you're not compressing that hard. Um, good enough. You're not gonna break a bone when it comes to a baby. Their bones are not solidified yet. They're still kind of mushy. You can still uh, fold them and stuff, and it's not gonna break a bone. So don't hold back because you're actually hurting the baby by not by holding back. All right. So after you give your 30 compressions, uh, you don't want to do this. You want to keep your hands on there. I was just kind of exaggerating. Um, we're gonna do a head tail chin lift, right? So when you do the head tail chin lift. Sorry about that. The head tilt, this one is a very uh, elastic. When you do the, the head tilt chin lift, you want to make sure it's not overextend. What I mean by overextend is not over bend the head backwards when you're doing a head tilt chin lift. We're doing a head tilt chin lift to open up the airway because that tongue is obstructing the airway, right? It's, it's, it's flawed back. By doing a head tilt chin lift, you're bringing that tongue up. But if you actually go too far back on a baby, um, you're going to kink the trachea, the, the, the windpipe. You're going to kink it. So, for that exact same reason why you don't want to hold back because you're not going to break a bone, it's the exact same reason why you don't want to overextend because that trachea is still very soft. It's like a very soft water hose. If you feel your trachea, you can feel the rings, it's pretty solid. 
well, the babies isn't solidified yet, right? So it's just really floppy and you can really kink that airway if you overextend it. Now you have the obstruction. And you're gonna give two breaths, okay? If you're using a bag mask, simple, put the, the bag mask over the baby, give your breath. If you're not, you wanna make sure to completely encapsulate your mouth on top of the nose and their mouth because it's kinda awkward and really, really hard to pinch their nose and then give them a breath, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, once your partner came back, you got your gear, and there's two of you, we switch over, as far as CPR, from the two finger technique to the two thumbs encircling, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You get two thumbs, you know, the nipple line, then directly underneath the nipple line, midline, you're gonna put two thumbs, you can overlap them, you can put them side by side, it doesn't really matter, but then you're gonna lay the baby down and you're gonna compress. With two people, we shift over from 30 to two compressions to 15 and two compressions. And there's a, there's a, a really important reason why we shift over and everything. Um, one day I'll make a, a video on their, their volume uh, and proportion to us and why they're not as efficient with O2, but it really comes down to all that. But just remember that when there's two people doing CPR, you shift from 30 and 2 to 15 and 2, and that allows you to put two extra breaths in between those 30, making it 15 and 2, because they need more O2 than we do, okay? So, insert two thumbs and circling technique, then your partner's going to give ventilations with the bag mask. Remember, don't, don't overextend, because you don't want to kink that airway. Uh, as far as CPR goes, that's really all I'm going to talk about. Now, one other thing you always want to consider with pediatrics is that you want to consider patting the back of the shoulders, okay? Um, because they have a bigger occipital region. Occipital is the back of the head. It's called the occipital region. Um, and with because of that, their head, can, if, if you have them flat down, it can tuck in, right? And that can also kink the airway, obstruct the airway because of the occipital region. It's going to push the head forward and it's going to kink that airway or obstruct the airway. However you want to think about it, all right? So that's another consideration. You'll always want to pat the shoulders of a pediatric, children, babies, infants, whatever you want to call them, pediatrics. Remember, you have pediatrics. Under that umbrella, you have um, children and infants, which are both pediatrics. Um, 